Jesus never judged, did he? And the people flocked to him. It was the religious people that hated him, but the sinners loved him because he never looked them up and down, never gave them a kind of second look to kind of just double check them. He saw past what was going on in their life and he saw what he was going to make them. And we got all the, we want you to grow up like us. No, God forbid. And we're saying, God, you know, just give me an opportunity, give me an opportunity, give me an opportunity. No, just take one. You see, what we do is we, instead of swinging it like anything can happen, we swing it the other way, that I won't do anything unless the Holy Spirit specifically speaks to me, an angel stands in front of me, gives me a word from heaven, it's confirmed by three other people in the church, and then I'll go and do it. But we think led by the Spirit is this. Okay, God, speak to me. We'll go over there. What, over there? Over there. Are you sure? Over there. And do what? They need the gospel. But what happens if they don't respond? Just go over there. But, but, but what, but, but this? Please, just go over there. Okay. Do you mean it? Yes. <laughs> and then we missed it. Why? Because we stand there, we stand there waiting for God, not just to speak to us, but make us do something. But he's going to get a people. And there's going to be a move that no man will control and no man will stick his name on it. And it's going to be supernatural that there's no explanation. It will baffle the media. It will baffle the newspapers. It will baffle the TV. It's going to be God's birth, God sustained, God directed, and God honoring. It's going to come. Jesus broke all the cultural rules of the day. Look at the woman at the well. There she was, sinner, middle of the day, coming out getting some water. She wasn't even living with her husband. She'd had five before. Here's this man of God, this rabbi. And he says, give me a drink. And they enter into that conversation. He has words of knowledge. He cuts across all the cultural things of the day. She was a, a, a Samaritan. He was a Jew. And it was like, this is not the norm. You can't do this kind of stuff. And Jesus says, stuff the culture. We're not called to fit into the culture. Let's get it out of our thinking that Christianity has to fit into the culture of the day, has to fit into the political correctness of the day. If that's what we do, we compromise the gospel. We don't believe that the gospel is the power of God to save and to change people's lives. We don't have to package it in a way that's nice and, and correct in these days. We have to make room not just for younger people, it's not about age. This is not a thing about age. It's making room for what God is wanting to do. Listen, they're not going to wait for you. You know, some of us, we say, God, I want to see more of the supernatural. I want to see more miracles. I want to see more things happen. And God's like, well, fine, that's up to you. Don't wait for me. I'm ready. I've been doing this. He said, I've been doing it for a long time before you were around, so I'm ready. I'm already in the flow. We've got to get out of this mentality that people have to sit in church and be taught and bored for a few years before they can do anything.